So you mentioned about your next plan of management for a clinical node zero. So again, with the histopath of a T2, so we have a T2 penile cancer, clinical node zero. We discuss in an MDT. And the first thing is we risk stratify the tumor. Risk stratification is the first thing that we do. And how do we risk stratify a penile CA? We do it by a low risk or a high risk. So what is a low risk CA penis? It is a, any uh, if the primary tumor comes out to be a T1A or below it, then it is a low risk. If it is a high risk, then it is T1B or it is beyond it. Okay, so you know about T1B. You mentioned that T1B is subepithelial connective tissue with lymphovascular invasion or perineural invasion. Okay, so if that is present or T2 is present or T3, T4 is present, anything beyond it is a high risk. High risk of what? High risk for groin mats. High risk for pelvic lymph node mats. So in those patients, we cannot just keep the patient on surveillance. We have to offer those patients a dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy. So the next question is, what is the role of ultrasound or an FNSE? Because anyway, we have to offer the patient a dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy, even if the groin nodes are not palpable. So what is the purpose of doing an inguinal ultrasound or an FNSE if the dynamic sentinel lymph node is anyway going to be performed? Because suppose the inguinal ultrasound you have done and it is uh, negative, there is no nodes. So are you going to avoid a dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy? No, you're still going to do a dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy. But if the inguinal ultrasound is done, you do an FNSE from the lymph node and you find that comes out to be a malignant. In that case, you avoid a dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy and straightforward go for a radical inguinal lymph node dissection. So your dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy is avoided by just an ultrasound and an FNSE. So two procedures are avoided in a patient. Straightforward, you can go for the therapeutic procedure rather than a surgical staging. So these are the key words that you have to use. Next plan is an inguinal ultrasound. FNSE and a surgical staging in the form of a dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy. What do you do if you are if you don't have the facility of a dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy? You do a modified inguinal lymph node dissection. Okay, so the purpose of doing a dynamic or a purpose of doing an inguinal ultrasound and an FNSE is that it reduces the need for dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy by 10 to 13 percent. Is it clear so far? Is it becoming too much? It's, I don't I don't think it's very complicated. It's very easy. You answered all of this correctly. Just a few points I wanted to add. That's fine. Okay. So as I mentioned, the guidelines mentioned, what do we do for a clinical node negative? If there is a clinical not palpable node, but there is a T1B or higher, in that case, recommended is a dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy. The examiner is waiting to hear that. But if you don't have the facility of a dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy, you go for a modified inguinal lymph node dissection. It's not a radical dissection. You remove some of the superficial nodes and the deep nodes, the medial most deep nodes. Okay, so this is what uh, clinical node zero is managed. And how does the clinical N plus is managed? You already know. Clinical N plus, the next step is you do an FDG PET or a CT scan, chest, abdomen, and pelvis, stage it, and then you proceed for a radical inguinal lymph node dissection. That is how you manage a clinical N+. plus. That is how you manage a clinical N0. Is it clear so far? So, yes. uh, okay. Then you said about the steps of dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy. I had to disagree on a few points that you, uh, I could not recall it exactly, but uh, it is done three to four hours before surgery. I cannot recall. You said, I think, one hour before surgery. So, uh, what the guidelines mention is you do it three to four, you inject the technician 99 M nanocolloid intradermally. Okay, so it's injected at four sites. Okay, and it's injected at the areas of the tip of the penis. And then uh, before, just before surgery, just before surgery, methylene blue is injected. So you need a technician. You need a technician 99M and a methylene blue. The two uh, in dual injections are given one three hour before surgery. One is given one hour before surgery and both the injections 
together if given will increase the sensitivity rates and decrease the false negativity rates. But if you just give a technician 99M, don't give a methylene blue, use a radio detector, radioactivity detector, gamma camera, and you just base your decision on the technician 99M activity, then the false negativity rates will be higher. It will be around 10 to 15%. So that is why we use both methylene blue and technician 99M to increase the sensitivity. This is taken from the Bowes leaflet. How do you explain the patient about the uh, sentinel uh, lymph node? Uh, this. Okay. So this is uh, dynamic sentinel lymph node biopsy steps. Okay. And if it is positive, you offer the patient a radical inguinal lymph node dissection. And you will write about the boundaries of the radical inguinal lymph node dissection. It is from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. Okay. And this is 20 centimeter laterally. Medially, it is 15 centimeter. Horizontally, it is the apex of the femoral triangle. Okay. So this is about the boundaries of the radical inguinal lymph node dissection. So just for the sake of completion, the next question would have been, since you progressed really well,